Hi there, this is uh, Eric Ruderman uh, from Northwestern University, and I'm coming to you from ACR Convergence 2020, uh, reporting for Room Now. Uh, tonight, I wanted to start by um, bringing up an interesting topic in the uh, area of psoriatic arthritis. I, I'm focusing on psoriatic arthritis at this meeting, and there are a number of new and interesting abstracts, but I wanted to talk about the idea of axial involvement in psoriatic arthritis, it's becoming a pretty important theme in the last few meetings uh, and something that uh, I think is raising a lot of very interesting questions. Uh, for many years, uh, we've treated the axial involvement in psoriatic arthritis very much the same as, as AS or axial spondyl arthritis, um, but we're starting to wonder whether there are differences there and there's some interesting uh, abstracts at this meeting that begin to look at that. And I think that's one of the themes that's, that's threading through the meeting. Um, you know, we've known for a very long time that uh, psoriatic arthritis patients have axial disease. In the original Molen Wright cr criteria, 5% of patients had uh, primarily axial disease. Uh, more recently, there's data that suggests that perhaps 40% of people have at least some element of axial involvement. Um, but we don't know how significant that is in everybody. Uh, is it clinically meaningful? And how do we define it? Um, other questions that keep coming up are, how does this uh, sort of roll into the idea of composite outcomes in psoriatic arthritis? Uh, psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, as you know, uh, are diseases with a, a bunch of different domains that can be involved. And as we think about treatments uh, and thinking about subsetting patients, we think about, you know, oligoarthritis or uh, more diffuse arthritis, about enthesitis, about dactylitis, about nail changes, about skin disease, and about axial disease. Uh, there's an interesting abstract that, that brings this up and, and raises this question at this meeting. Uh, some data from the Psoriatic Arthritis Research Consortium that looks at improvement in the BASDI score, which is typically thought of as an axial uh, composite score. Uh, but they looked at psoriatic arthritis patients with and without axial involvement uh, by a variety of definitions, and the improvement in the BASDI score was similar in both groups, which suggests that what we think of as an axial score may not be fully axial and may ref reflect uh, peripheral arthritis. And that uh, becomes interesting as we start to think about how people respond in psoriatic arthritis. Number of abstracts at this meeting uh, and other meetings on um, different treatments and axial disease. Um, most of these are post hoc analyses. So there's an abstract on axial disease with upadacitinib therapy of psoriatic arthritis. Um, not a primary uh, design, study design element, but they looked uh, after the fact at patients who had been defined as axial disease and looked at whether upadacitinib worked as well in those patients as others. Uh, there's another abstract looking at axial disease in the Guzelcomab clinical trials for psoriatic arthritis. And then there's data from the Maximize study, which is actually the only study we have that looks primarily at axial psoriatic arthritis. Uh, this study involves secukinumab and looked at patients um, with spinal involvement with MRIs and plain film imaging in the study uh, and looks at outcomes in those patients. Again, they suggested improvement, but the, the issue is that they use some of the axial measures that may or may not fully reflect axial disease. So I think these bring up a lot of interesting questions. And I think um, they bring up the question that we're gonna be struggling with at this meeting and, and for many meetings and in the literature in the next few years to come, does axial involvement distinguish different medications? Are there different treatments that are gonna be more useful in patients with axial disease? Um, and should we be suggest, uh, should we uh, be selecting those drugs in those patients, much like we've stayed away from methotrexate for psoriatic arthritis in patients with axial involvement um, and moved to biologics? But are there specific biologics? Are JAK inhibitors going to be the way to go? How is this going to uh, sort of intersect with the concept of treat to target, which is becoming an important concept in psoriatic arthritis, much like it's been in rheumatoid arthritis, um, where does axial response fit into that target? Is it an important part of the target? Um, and again, how do we separate that out? And finally, 
how is this going to reflect uh, what we have in terms of treatment recommendations? The uh, GRAPA group is currently uh, revising their treatment guidelines, and they uh, made a very clear effort in the previous two iterations of these to separate people out by domains. So where do we put the axial domain? And are those patients um, the same as patients with AS or AXPA? In the past, that's the data we've had to go on, but now as we start to have data from psoriatic arthritis trials, can we look at it differently? Uh, a lot more questions than answers, but I, I think this is an area to focus on. I think it's gonna be an area of increasing interest at this meeting and the next few meetings to come. Uh, so I'd urge you to take a look at it. Uh, if you wanna look at this and other uh, areas, I, I'd urge you to, to log into Room Now. Uh, lots of information about ACR Convergence 2020.